We are riding off the high right now of just finishing the STI build. We have one last piece of the puzzle. We are gonna be installing my AEM 340 liter per hour fuel pump. I have previously installed one of these on my WRX, so I think it's gonna be very similar. So let's get right into it. So right off the bat, first thing you wanna do is disconnect your battery. So disconnect the negative and positive terminals. Do not do this with a full gas tank. I mean, you're just asking for trouble. My gas tank, if you've watched the previous videos, that thing is damn near empty, so I don't have to worry about that. Now, as far as how to remove the terminals, it's usually one bolt and one nut in some type of configuration. Sometimes people, when they buy their cars, especially used cars, the hardware is not really the one that's supposed to be there. It's usually mix match. So just grab a wrench or some type of socket with a ratchet and just remove them. And then once you remove the terminals, you're good to go. Now we can jump over to the back seat. There's gonna be two tabs, I believe, one on this side and one on that side of the seat. You're gonna to have to do something like this to pull the seat out of here. They're just locked into place with plastic tabs. So you just gotta find it in between the seat and then yank out. That's one. All right, there we go. So right underneath the passenger side back seat is the fuel tank. Now to access it, there's four bolts all around, or four screws, I should say. They're Phillips head screws, so we just need to get a screwdriver and take them out. Covers off. Oh my gosh, so many spider webs in there. Like there's an electrical connector holding this in place. Let's disconnect that. So besides that electrical connector, there are three fuel lines that we need to remove. You pinch, I believe, the tops and then just pull out. So now that the fuel lines are disconnected, now we need to unbolt the tank from the actual sump. I think these are eight millimeter bolts, I wanna say. There's a total of seven. I'm gonna pull the ring out now. And then now we can finally pull the actual fuel pump out to the little basket here. Hopefully that's not too much trouble. I forgot how annoying this is because it gets caught in everything. And then there's another gasket right here that this thing sits on that wants to come with it. Try to angle it back. Okay. All right, guys, it's also very important you do not break this little lever. It tells the car essentially how full the tank is, and if you break this, yeah, <laughs> you're not gonna see how, how much gas you have left. So here's the original fuel hanger, the OEM one. I'm not gonna be doing any radium stuff today. We're just gonna be doing a simple drop-in pump. Now, I think the first thing we have to do is pry open these tabs all around so we can split this open, and then we'll figure it out from there. Number one, I'm gonna try to disconnect this. I'm gonna take some very small needle nose pliers, press down firmly, but I guess try to be as delicate as I can. There we go. Okay, I was worried for a second. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I was like, okay, which connector goes where? But there's only room for one connector on each slot because they're different sizes. So you don't have to worry about that. Okay guys, so we're gonna have to start disassembling this. We're gonna do it piece by piece. So it looks like a lot of things are tabbed in, which is great. We're gonna start off by doing these tabs here, one on this side, pull out, boom. Ooh, nice. Now I need to figure out a way to disconnect the fuel pump from the actual tank here. I think there's a tab all the way right here in between that you can push something into and then the thing, at least the connector will drop out most likely. So off camera, what I did is I grabbed the flathead, put it down, and then I went around the other side and then got a pinch of these wires. And then I was able to pull the top uh, portion of the harness out. Now there's a hole on this side right here and then there's a harder hole to see where this tab is as well as, I don't know, this, this white this white piece. Uh, there's two tabs in here that you're gonna have to get a flat head in and you're just gonna have to, I guess, depress them because once you depress them, I guess, play with it, pull it down. Uh, it's gonna be kind of difficult. I obviously still haven't got mine out, but uh, what I'm trying to do here is essentially just as I described, I'm trying to get this pried in. Oh. Nice. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I don't know how you're supposed to do this without two hands, or actually four hands, I should say, because, yeah, you're not getting all this out by yourself. Good luck. All right, so this is the fuel pump, the OEM one. Now, you can see here's the two prong connector that we had that we removed earlier with the two wires. This little thing, I guess it's a, I don't know, a little spacer, a little plastic piece. We won't need this, just showing you. And then here are the two plastic tabs that are gonna be a pain in the ass. I mean, this is really, really rigid plastic. This is not designed to come out. And you guys can see right here, I don't know if you've seen that on camera, but there's pry marks on both sides. So this is what I was talking about. You kind of need to push inwards, pry outwards, 
and at the same time pull down. It's super hard to do it by yourself. I've done it once, but I don't even know how I did it. So this is our new AM340 pump. Open it up, got your new fuel sock, new fuel pump, very similar to the OEM model. We have two new O-rings. I'll show you guys where to put those. And let's see, there is one little retaining clip inside of this packaging itself. I'll show you where to put that as well. Um, but yeah, there's not much. I believe this wiring harness uh, to wire this up was already installed. Uh, sorry, not installed, but it was in this box. But we're not gonna be reusing that or using that. We're gonna be using the OEM connector since it does work. And I'm not hard wiring the pump to anywhere. We're just gonna be dropping this thing in. And again, here is a little side-by-side -side comparison. Not much changes, just the capacity of the actual, I guess, pump itself. And if I'm on a roll today, it's because I'm caffeinated, I'm feeling good. First thing I'm gonna do is remove this top. Now you have to take this, I guess, spacer, this black piece here, and then reinsert it on the top right here on the new one. Seat it all the way down, just like so. And then we're gonna take one of our new O-rings and reinstall it on the very top. Ah, there we go. And again, since it's silicone, we're gonna lube this thing up. I don't know, O-rings are so hit or miss, man. Especially because they're all seem to be the, the specific size for the application. So that's good. We got that installed. Now we can install that lower portion here. I guess the sock. And then let me see if I can show you guys. So notice how there is a notch here and there is another hole. And it looks like there's a hole for the actual bottom port. So I guess that fits right like this, just like so. Okay, so now this thing is on there. It's sitting flush right here and it has nowhere else to go. Now this last O-ring actually goes inside the fuel basket where this thing came out of. So if you look down, it is right there in that corner. So we're gonna lube it up and then squeeze it down there. Now our new O-ring is installed into the fuel basket. Now we can move this aside. Now we can just throw this thing in there. So it's pretty nice. You just line up the holes. So obviously the big hole to the big hole and the electrical connector to that space up top. And that's the nice thing about the AEM340 doing this mod is you don't have to worry about the wiring, you don't have to worry about anything else. It's just a drop in solution. Ooh, sweet. You hear that snap? That thing is in there, guys. Okay, now let's reconnect the rest of this stuff. Beautiful. And then let's do this portion. Yep, yep, just like that. This line should not go over top of this. It should go behind here right next to this one that connects to this white one and uh this is pretty much it now of course we still have to reconnect these but uh let me show you it should spring up and forth or back and forth and yep we're good this connector here goes into the smaller port and then looks like everything's done we can just throw this back into the basket and the other connector here goes on top i put a little silicone lubricant all over here because this o-ring is about to seat in here and then now we just got to line up the holes are we gonna have an easy time yep perfect just got to plug this in there we go just like that and they are tucked away now I think we're ready to uh, put this thing back into the car. All right, let's see, let's see. Don't want to reinstall all the connectors yet. You just got to throw this gasket over the top. All right, just like so. Now we got to line this thing up. So gasket, fuel pump basket, then put this hard piece back on, line it up. And what you're going to do is find the holes. And then we're just gonna, you're just going to press down, that's it and then you just have to bolt this back up. And we'll reconnect our fuel lines. That's on. Okay, there we go. And there we go. All right, all my fuel lines are now routed um, back to the tank. Now we just have to reconnect this thing, plug in the harness again, and then we just gotta retighten this. I'm not gonna reinstall this crap. This is just foam. I didn't do it on my WRX, and I'm definitely not gonna do it on my SCI. All right, I'm just gonna tighten these up real quick, and then let's go prime the car and see if we can uh, we can see a reading for our uh, fuel capacity, and that'll tell us that the fuel pump's working. We can hear it prime as well. All right, moment of truth here. If we end up seeing the fuel capacity rise right here, just to see if the tank has a reading, we're good, as well as hearing the back seat turn on uh, for the fuel pump. One, two, three. Oh, okay, okay. 
And look, low fuel, but we have a measurement. We are good. Man, I am feeling <laughs> a whole lot better now that we got that done. Yesterday, if my mood on camera seemed a little weird, it's because it was, um, I was just really stressed out. I mean, even now I am extremely tired. For some reason, the, the days up to the dyno, I get no sleep. I just, you know, I'm thinking nonstop about this car because I truly love this thing. I mean, this has a lot of sentimental value to me. Um, which I'll go over maybe one day in the future why, but uh, yeah. So the thing is yesterday we were doing the install, all the, gear, all the gear died, which is one issue. And then on top of that, I'm going to prime the fuel pump just to test for leaks again and again. And then we heard a weird noise. So that noise was really weird, freaked me out, but apparently that's normal. I checked on the Subaru Mechanics Facebook group and they said that's all normal coming from the uh, throttle body here since it's opening and closing. And uh, unfortunately that sloshing noise had me concerned. I was up all night double checking all the diagrams for all the fuel lines. I was worried I was crushing the fuel lines. Uh, but now that I primed the car, I don't hear anything. So maybe that's good news. I'm gonna double check with my builder and uh, you know, hopefully fingers crossed that we have no issues. Now stay tuned for the next video because right after this, today we're gonna be going to LA because we still have to start this car. We still need to boot the coolant system. And to do that, we need a new base map because we're jumping greater than 25% in injector size. I think the stock ones are 565, 600, and we're going all the way to uh, 1300. So that's over 100%, obviously, uh, you know, 600 to 1300 here. And then the plan is, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, you know, this is my first big, big project. So I'm gonna take my car to my builder. I don't know if I'm gonna film. I don't know if he's comfortable with that, but I'd like to. And I'm gonna get his, you know, his second opinion, his revision. And we're gonna start the car with him because again, I just really don't feel comfortable doing that myself, especially with all the work that we just did. And especially with all the money that I've now put into the STI. I'd rather pay him, you know, a couple hundred dollars just to double check everything and make sure we're all good for the Saturday's appointment because I don't need this car blowing up anytime soon, uh, at least for the next year or two for the most part. Thank you for checking out today's video. Make sure you watch the next one because it's always a fun time going up to LA and seeing my tuner. Until next time, I'll see you on the next one.